Hey guys, what's up? This is Let's Ride USA. On today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to sell a dirt bike online. Now, buying and selling dirt bikes can be a very profitable business. In fact, I've made a lot of money off of buying dirt bikes, riding them for a year or two, cleaning them up, selling them, and I always make a profit. And I will continue to make a profit on my machines. I actually would not have been able to buy my beautiful 2013 YZ250F race bike without my knowledge of buying and selling motorcycles. What I was able to do is buy a 2007 Honda CRF 230F for $1,500. I rode the bike for a little bit over a year and then sold it for $2,200. I was able to make $800 in profit on a bike that I rode consistently just about every single day for a year and a half. That is incredible considering that most of the time dirt bikes are what most people consider a depreciating asset. What that means is much like a car, once you drive it off the dealership, it starts to lose money. However, in my mind, it doesn't have to be like that. So that's why today I'm gonna be teaching you guys the tips and tricks that I use when selling a dirt bike to maximize profitability. So the first thing I always do before selling a bike is clean it up. Nobody wants to buy a dirty bike. And in fact, when I bought this bike, and obviously I bought it used, uh, all my bikes I buy used, I bought it and it was dirty. I went home and I washed it and it just really didn't sit well with me as a buyer. I know when I buy a bike, I want it looking as new as possible. When I bought my 250, that thing looked like it just rolled out of the showroom. So that's what I try to do because it's always good for your customers and a happy customer is always good for business. You gotta remember that when you're washing a bike uh, with the intent to sell it right after, it's gotta be a little bit more than just a quick rinse down with the garden hose after a day at the track. You gotta really go over the bike and detail it to look as new as possible. Go check out my how to wash a dirt bike video for more information on this. You really want to be sure to get all the way under the bike and get as much mud off as possible. Ideally, there should be no mud on this bike. However, that can be a little bit difficult, but sometimes you just got to put in the extra work to get it there. A lot of people will sometimes just throw on new plastics and graphics in an attempt to hide a lack of maintenance or a uh, lack of care for the bike. That's just something that I've learned as a buyer. and. Being a buyer and a seller is extremely beneficial to me because I know what a buyer wants. What I want is a bike that looks new. So one of the ways you can do that is not only by washing it, but by putting on new graphics and plastics. So that's what we did here is we put on new Rockstar NAG graphics and the original front fender was extremely scratched up and just didn't look nice. So we put on a new front fender because it's gonna make the bike look that much newer and that much more appealing to a buyer. So this is something that I probably should have mentioned uh, a lot earlier and this is definitely something you guys need to keep in mind. Uh, I know you've been hearing me say that the goal is to get this bike in the best possible condition and look at, and make it look as close to showroom new as possible. While this still remains the goal, you have to remember that you're trying to do this for the least amount possible. Now is not the time to be throwing a bunch of money at the bike and trying to make it you know, look amazing for a high price. You know, this is meant to be done at a low cost. So all the techniques I'm using are costing me virtually nothing. You know, I already had soap and a brush and water, you know, cleaning the bike is free. That's kind of what I'm going at with this is, it's more of the time. You're gonna need to put in a lot of time. Don't put in a lot of money, put in a lot of time. Now there may be some things that need to be fixed on the bike and whatnot. So this is the time where you wanna be resourceful. For example, I'm missing a gas cap vent hose and I don't want to sell the bike without that just because I think it doesn't look good and I think that uh, a bike that I'm selling should come with something that simple. So what I'm going to do is I have an old one left over from the XR100 and I'm going to use that to replace it. I'm not going to be go out and buy one because I'm trying to keep the cost down low. Really the money I've spent into getting this bike looking you know showroom new or as best condition as possible is really just the plastics and graphics which uh, I bought the graphics for $30 the front fender for I think probably $15 and the seat cover for I think another $20 so I didn't really put that much into it and I also put that stuff in like a couple months ago so I've gotten use out of it 
but when I bought it, I bought it with the intent that this will add value to my bike. So what's amazing is that I was able to get use out of these new graphics and plastics. I was able to enjoy them, ride with them, and then now that I'm getting ready to sell it, I really took the time to detail the plastics and get them back to that uh, almost new condition. The condition of a bike is a lot more than what's on the outside. Anyone can throw on new plastics and new graphics and try to make the bike look as new as possible. However, you gotta take care of the bike and make sure that it's in great operating condition and this is done by keeping up with, of course, maintenance. So like I said, go check out my how to maintain a dirt bike to find out more on this topic. Now while on the topic of maintenance, there's some maintenance that you can do right before selling a bike that is gonna add value to it. This is pretty much just the standard preventative maintenance. Doing an air filter change, and an oil change. This is not gonna cost me a lot of money at all. The air filter I can clean, I already have the cleaner and the oil, so that's done. Even if I were to buy a new air filter, the air filters for this bike are maybe around 10 bucks. For the oil, I bought this oil for about $12. Doing this basic maintenance that is also going to be very cheap is gonna add a lot of value to my bike because it's gonna differentiate this motorcycle from all the other ones that maybe aren't coming with a fresh air filter or a fresh oil change. The buyer is gonna have to go pick up the bike, go back home, change the oil, change the air filter. That's more time and more of a hassle for the buyer. I know that if it were me buying the bike and I, it came with a dirty air filter and a dirty oil, A, I probably wouldn't buy the bike if I saw that when I showed up and I saw that the air filter was dirty and I saw that the oil looked like it had been changed in six months, I would just walk away right there. I wouldn't buy the bike. Now, if I were to buy the bike, I'd say, all right, well, knock off $50 because I'm gonna have to buy oil and take my time to change it. But since we're doing this ahead of time, we know the buyer's not gonna walk away due to a dirty oil, dirty air filter, and we're not gonna have the issue of them knocking the price down because this maintenance wasn't already done. I'm okay if a buyer wants to knock down the price due to something like tires. Like I know that these tires are not brand new. They're definitely worn and could definitely be replaced. And if they want to knock off $50 because the tires are worn, I'm fine with that because, you know, tires are going to cost me $60 minimum. So for me, it's worth it not to change the tires because if they want to knock, you know, $50 off the price, fine, because then I'm saving money as opposed to if I were to replace the tires. Now, if it's something more like $100, then that's an issue, then you need to be negotiating. However, something as simple as changing the oil and changing the air filter and making sure that the chain is tight, basic stuff you should be doing with your bike already, I don't want anyone to knock the price off or even leave for that matter. So that's why I make sure I get that stuff done before I ever put this bike for sale. All right, we got the bike all cleaned up and man, does she look good. Wow, that is a big improvement over what it was 20 minutes ago. This looks way cleaner and on the camera, all that uh, neon green plastics and how shiny the exhaust pipe is and the engine, it really pops, and that's the goal for the pictures. That's why I suggest right after you wash the bike, go take some high quality pictures. Before we go take pictures though, there's one more thing that I wanna do. As you can see, these wheels, which happen to just be painted, are starting to chip. I'm not even gonna strip off all the paint that's on there and try to repaint it, just because that's gonna take up way too much time. Instead, I'm just gonna take some Plasti Dip, which I already have, and just go over the paint and try to clean up all the chips. Now I'm no pro painter by any means, but I do have some experience with uh, touching up some Plasti Dip. Like I said, I'm not the best at it, but I'm gonna give it my best shot because this isn't gonna cost me anything. This is something free that I can do to increase the value of my bike. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot and see how it goes. If I mess up, it's Plasti Dip, so I'll just peel it right off and we'll be back at square one. All right, so right here we've got a little bit of uh, some rust spots on this shifter. So what I'm gonna do is use the plastic to kind of cover that up and make it look just that much better. And I know some people may be thinking that, oh, I'm hiding scratches or covering up rust spots or whatever. And to an extent, yeah, it's true. That's what I'm doing, but it, it's almost like a lesser of two evils. You're either gonna get scratches or 
Plasti Dip over it. Obviously, I'm not going to replace this whole swing arm just so it doesn't have any scratches because, like I said, we're trying to do this for the least amount possible and make the most profit. So what you can do is either leave it scratched up or you can take a little bit of time and try to make it look as good as it possibly can. And this is one of the ways to do it. Now, I don't recommend this method of painting on uh, expensive bikes. Like, don't do, I wouldn't do this on like race bikes or anything like that. But little bikes, you know, XR100s, Sierra 50s, you know, 230s, tr these trail bikes that tend to get these scratches and these weird spots. Yeah, plasti dipping or painting over it is definitely a great idea. Just do it in moderation. I hate it when I see people who, you know, plasti dip the engine cover or something like that because it's scratched up yeah this is scratched up but i'm leaving that you know doing wheels or even doing like brake levers that's fine but just remember do it in moderation don't go overboard something to keep in mind is that if you guys have been following this channel for a while you would have known that when i did buy this bike it came with these uh painted wheels uh, i'm not sure what kind of paint i don't think it was plasti dip i think it was just regular spray paint that was on it. Maybe it was plastic, I don't know. But when I bought it, all these chips were already there. None of these chips, maybe a couple here and there, but for the most part, a lot of these chips I bought with the bike. And I would have preferred someone go over the bike and you know spray paint it up and fix up the chips that were already there than just sell it to me with the chips already there and then I have to do the work of you know re-spray painting it. So that's why I'm doing it. Not you really just trying to cover everything up, but I'm just trying to make sure my buyer has less work to do. Because as I said, as a buyer, I would have preferred that someone else did this before I bought the bike. So that's kind of why I'm doing this now. Like I said, not costing me anything, just a little bit of time, and it's going to pay off in the end. All right, so we're done painting up everything. Looks a whole lot better than it did. We, we didn't go overboard, just kind of touched up some certain parts. Like I didn't, uh, you know, respray this whole wheel, just touched it up a little bit, and it seems to be drying very, very nicely. So I'm very happy with that. Now it's time to take pictures. Like I stated before, taking pictures right after you wash it is a great way to really optimize the quality of how the bike looks because. As you can already see, now that I'm starting to let the bike dry, you can kind of see some of the dust kind of popping up again. So that's why when you do it right after the bike's washed, it's still a little bit wet and it really just shines that much better. So unfortunately, I did kind of let it dry just a little bit too long because I had to go and paint the wheels because I couldn't paint that when it was dirty, so I had no choice but to wash it first. We're gonna make do best we can and go take these pictures. I almost forgot. This is something very important for the picture quality. While we did clean the chain, it still just doesn't look that great. So that's why we're gonna be using chain wax to not only increase the health of our chain, but also to make it look better. There we go, that looks a lot better. Now that we have a bike that is not only clean, but has a fresh oil and a fresh air filter, we are ready to start taking pictures. Too many times on Craigslist, I've seen people just take horrible pictures. Low quality photos when the bike is like stuffed in the back of a shed with, you know, three other bikes around and you don't even know which bike is which. You know, which one's the one being sold and which one isn't. That's why I always like to make sure I take the bike out, make sure you have a good background and also take all the photos in one sitting. I've also noticed some people, they just go through their camera roll and they just find pictures that they have of the bike and use that to post. The reason I don't like that is because as a consumer, I feel like I'm not getting an accurate photo of what the bike looks like today. I don't know if that photo taken was a week ago or three months ago or when they took it. Could have even been when they first bought the bike and it was brand new. And you go pick up the bike and it looks nothing like the picture. That's why I like to take all the photos in one sitting right before I'm about to sell it. Just some tips that I have is, aside from making sure that the bike is clean, that you have a good background, make sure you have a good camera to take the pictures with. Now, while I don't have a professional camera to use, iPhone quality seems to work just as great if you take the time to set up a picture nicely. First thing that you do not want to do is hold the camera vertically, like this, because the pictures are not gonna fill up the screen like they should. That's why you wanna hold the camera 
or hold the phone horizontally, like this. Next, you want to take multiple photos showing all different parts of the bike. You want to show the front, the back, the sides, what it looks like from the handlebars too. Bunch of different ways just to make sure that the customer knows exactly what they are getting. This also makes them feel better about the bike knowing that you have nothing to hide. Okay, so now the final step to selling a dirt bike and getting the most money for it is now you got to upload it to a website and write a description. So I would recommend uploading it to as many websites as possible. I personally use uh, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, and Letgo. I usually don't list bikes on eBay just because I, I don't really like it. I just think it's, uh, I don't think a lot of people are buying bikes on eBay. So that's what I recommend. Those three seem to work the best. You definitely don't want to limit yourself. Definitely upload to as many websites as you possibly can. Uh, like I said, I usually will upload to all three. So uh, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, and Letgo. Um, and use, you know, the same ad and all the same pictures and stuff like that. So it makes it really easy and also pretty efficient. Anyway, now we're going to transition to now you've got you know, you got your clean bike, you've got the right pictures, you know where you're going to post it, but now you got to write the description and that's going to be the final selling point to get you the most money for your motorcycle. So up on the screen here is a brief outline of what you want your description to do and we're going to go through each of these bullet points and I'm going to show you um, a sample description that I actually did for the KLX 110L when I sold it. Um, and it worked really good. So we're kind of going to go back and forth and see how these goals are then kind of transitioned into my uh, actual description. So first off, the goal is to answer as many possible questions in the description as you can. Uh, this is going to speed up the negotiation process and also just um, enhance your credibility as a motorcyclist and as a motorcycle seller. So you're going to want to start off uh, with a uh, with a little introduction, and throughout the whole thing, you want to be friendly. You want to have a kind introduction, um, and just make it sound like you are a personable uh, individual who kind of knows what they're talking about. And that kind of leads into my second bullet point, uh, which is you want to be knowledgeable. You obviously want to include all relevant information on the bike. This includes uh, recent maintenance, like kind of you know big time maintenance. Uh, you know, was it recently uh, service? Did you have the brakes replaced? Little stuff like that. Uh, also, you know, was the oil recently changed? Uh, and then you also want to list out all the aftermarket parts. It really annoys me when I see a listing and someone will just say, has a lot of aftermarket parts. Well, what kind? I want to know exactly what is coming on the bike. And it kind of shows that you know, you know your bike, you know what's on it, and uh, just kind of makes it seem like you took that much more care of it. Next, of course, and this I, I probably should have put this uh, at the front of this list, but you want to be honest, okay? Uh, really be honest about what condition the bike is in. Don't lie because at the end of the day, the person, whoever is going to buy the bike is going to come, take a look at it, and they can tell uh, just upon first appearance if you were truthful or not. And you don't want to waste their time. You don't want to waste your time, so be honest always. Next, you want to explain how often routine maintenance was done. Uh, typically on you know race bikes you can be pretty specific if you do have an hour meter which I definitely suggest you should get an hour meter um, but you know with air, I always did on, on my YZ250 I would always do air filters every other ride and oil changes every five to ten hours but then on trail bikes like this bike my XR100 my CRF230 I didn't have um, an hour meter so I just kind of said I did oil change frequently and the air filter was done you know just as often, if not more often, type thing. Finally, uh, now transitioning to our last three bullet points, uh, is you want to explain the reason for selling. Um, you know, my always reason has always been uh, looking to transition to a bigger bike, uh, stuff like that. Uh, you also kind of want to explain how the bike was ridden. Was it ridden in the trails? Was it ridden on the track? Was it raced? All little things like that go a long way. And then finally, you want to uh, include relevant tags to uh, enhance search engine optimization. So what this means is usually definitely on Craigslist, and I know I think on Facebook Marketplace, you can include tags. So what I always do is kind of, you know, if I'm selling a, this bike, I would include Kawasaki, KLX, KLX 110, KLX 110L, um, Honda, Suzuki, DRZ, DRZ 110, Sierra, like anything that would be relevant. If someone is looking to buy 
a 110, you know, a pit bike 110, or even just a trail bike, try to include as many tags as you can to bring them to your listing. So that's going to be it for my little brief overview. Now let's transition to see how I use this little template in practice. So here's what I wrote uh, when I listed this bike for sale. Uh, I said, hi, Craigslist, for sale is my 2011 KLX 110L. So there you go, a little friendly introduction. Uh, the bike is in good condition and has always been maintained extremely well. I'm an experienced rider and I make sure that my bikes uh, always receive proper oil changes and air filter changes. Uh, so that right there, I kind of, you know, give myself credibility just by talking about the maintenance of the bike. Then I go on to say, since this is the L version, it comes stock with a clutch, four gears, and larger suspension in comparison to the standard Ka Kawasaki KLX 110, which is a semi-auto transmission, three gears, and is a lot smaller. So there you go. I just kind of show my knowledge of not only this bike, but other bikes in the market. And then here I go into talking about all the aftermarket parts that are on the bike. And notice how I just don't list, you know, exhaust, aftermarket bars, aftermarket, like I actually list out the companies and the specific part that's on it. So I say full pro circuit T4 exhaust, uh, XR50 high rise bars, MSR clutch lever, uh, and you can go through and read all that. But I was really detailed um, just to kind of show that I knew what was on my bike. I had knowledge of my bike and I had a, a certain level of care for the bike as well. And then here is my closing paragraph. So I said that the steering stem bearings were just recently replaced this past spring. So the bike handles great. Uh, so notice talking about recent maintenance, uh, the full pro circuit exhaust paired with the upgraded carb allows this bike to gain performance and power compared to other stock 110s on the market. Finally, the upgraded rear shock ensures that the bike will be able to handle larger jumps and larger riders as well. So notice I kind of show my knowledge of what the actual upgrades of this bike are doing. Then I go on to talk about the reason I'm selling the bike. So I say the reason I'm selling this motorcycle is because my brother has outgrown it and is ready to move up to an 85. It was only used for light trail riding behind the house and it was used a couple times at the mini uh, MX track. So see, I talked about the way that the bike was used. And then here I go on to be pretty honest in saying uh, that the only issue with the bike is that the electric start does not work. Uh, however, that's no problem because it starts first kick, which was totally true. I can never get the electric start to work, but it literally started up first kick. And then finally, I just go on to say other things I'm going to include with the bike. Usually when I sell a motorcycle, I'll include, you know, any spare parts I have, any uh, old oil that, you know, I didn't use or uh, air filters, stuff like that, just because I think it adds value uh, as a consumer. And finally, you want to end it uh, by not only giving your, you know, information, but also just saying, if you're interested, let me know. I'll answer all your questions. Be open to answering questions um, just because it makes a, a consumer feel like you actually care about the bike and you're not just looking for a quick sell. So that's going to be it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a really long video and I apologize for that, but I felt like I had a lot of info that I wanted to share. And I really hope you guys can use this um, because it's worked wonders for me, this system. Uh, I've sold probably about five bikes uh, within the past few years. All bikes that I've used pretty consistently and ridden just about almost every single day. Um, and I've not lost a single cent on any motorcycle that I have bought and then sold later on. So I want to thank you guys for watching this. Please let me know down in the comments if you uh, found this video useful, if I should do other videos like this. Um, and yeah, I definitely want to hear if this video helped you guys sell a bike. So I really appreciate uh, you guys taking the time to watch this video. And please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.